great day, everyone. This is your instructor, Sir Arves. Come and join me as we enter the Chapter 2 of the Mathematics in a Modern World, Mathematics as a Tool, Part 1. Let us begin! Lesson 4. Data Management there are three intended learning outcomes for this lesson. First, use a variety of statistical tools to process and manage numerical data. Second, use the methods of linear regression and correlation to predict the value of a variable given certain conditions. Then the third is advocate the use of statistical data in making important decisions. This lesson will cover seven salient topics in statistics to include the first one, which is basic statistical concepts, second, measures of central tendency, third, measures of dispersion, fourth, measures of relative position, fifth, probability and the normal distribution, sixth, correlation and linear regression, and the last one, the chi-square. Lesson Coverage 1 Basic Statistical Concepts What is statistics? Statistics has both plural and singular meaning. In the plural sense, it is a set of numerical data or observations that are systematically collected and analyzed. For instance, vital statistics in a beauty pageant, yearly income, monthly household expenses, and many more. In the singular sense, it is defined as a branch of science which deals with the collection, presentation, analysis of data, and interpretation of results. Collection of data refers to the different data gathering techniques. Presentation of data refers to the process of organizing data such as tabulation, presenting using charts or graphs. Analysis of data refers to the method of obtaining necessary, relevant, and noteworthy information from the given data using statistical tools. Interpretation of results refers to the tools of drawing out of conclusions descriptions, inferences, and generalizations from the analyzed data. There are two major fields of statistics. We have the applied, which is concerned with the procedures and techniques used in the collection, presentation, organization, analysis, and interpretation of data. We also have the theoretical or mathematical which is concerned with the development of mathematical foundations of the methods used in applied statistics. Under applied statistics, we have descriptive and inferential. Descriptive statistics includes all the techniques used in organizing, summarizing, and presenting the data on hand without drawing conclusion or inferences about a large group, whereas inferential statistics includes all the techniques used in analyzing the sample data that will lead to generalization about a population from which the sample came from. The main goal of descriptive statistics is simply to provide a description of a data set for which the conclusions or the important characteristics apply only to the data set on hand, whereas the main goal of inferential statistics is not merely to provide a description of a data set, but also to make prediction and inference based on the available information gathered. But you have to take note that in inferential statistics, 
we may not study the population. Here are some examples. In descriptive statistics, the head nurse wants to determine the number of COVID-19 patients for the past three months. In inferential statistics, the head nurse wants to infer whether the number of COVID-19 patients for the past three months significantly differ between genders. Another one, in descriptive, a businessman wants to know his profit for the past six months. In inferential, the businessman wants to estimate his profit for the next six months. The last example, in descriptive, Dr. Reyes wants to identify her students' performances in statistics and mathematics, respectively. In inferential, Dr. Reyes wants to conclude whether her students' performance in statistics is significantly related to their performance in mathematics. I guess you are now ready. Let's do these activities. Identify the given statements as descriptive or inferential. Number one, a prediction whether it will rain tomorrow or not. Is it descriptive or inferential? Correct, it is inferential. Number two, the average age of students in statistics class over 22 years. Is it descriptive or inferential? Correct, it is descriptive. Number three, forecast of direction of typhoon Ulysses. Is it descriptive or inferential? Correct, it is inferential. Number four, a pie graph of number of students enrolled in online and modular classes. Is it descriptive? or inferential. Correct, it is descriptive. The last number, number five, a table presenting the number of passers per school in a recently released board examination. Is it descriptive or inferential? Correct, it is descriptive. Population versus sample. Population is the totality of elements under consideration in a statistical investigation. The specific characteristic of the population is described using the summary measure called parameter. Sample is the subset of a population. The specific characteristic of the sample is described using the summary measure called statistic. Here are some examples. In the population, all students enrolled at Cebu Technological University. For the sample, statistics major students enrolled at Cebu Technological University. Take note that statistics major students is just a subset of all students enrolled. Next example is all applicants of senior high school. For the sample, male applicants of senior high school. Remember that male applicants is just a subset of all applicants. Last example, for the population, all residents of municipality of Tabugon. For the sample, DSWD 4 piece recipient residents of municipality of Tabugon. These 4 piece recipient residents is just a subset 
of all residents. Let's do these activities. A factory overseer selects 40 threaded rods at random from those produced that week at the factory. Then, she tests their tensile strength. Which of these is the appropriate population and sample to be considered? The yellow options are your choices for the population. The brown options are your choices for the sample. Let's go first finding the appropriate population. Which of the three is the correct one? First, all threaded rods ever produced at the factory. Second, the threaded rods produced at the factory that week. Third, all threaded rods in the world. The answer is the second one, the threaded rods produced at the factory that week. Let's now find the appropriate sample to be considered. First, the threaded rods produced at the factory that week. Second, all threaded rods ever produced at the factory. Or third, the 40 threaded rods selected. The appropriate sample to be considered is the 40 threaded rods selected. Great job! How about you try answering? A group of librarians is interested in the number of books and other media that patrons check out from their library. They examine the checkout records of 150 randomly selected adult patrons. Which of these is the appropriate population and sample to be considered? You may post the video if you want to answer. The correct answer is the population is all adult patrons of the library. The sample is the 150 patrons selected. Did you get it right? Variables and their classifications. A variable is a characteristic, description, or attribute of persons or objects which assumes different values or labels. For instance, a biodata form. The items that are need to be filled are the variables, such as the names, the age, the gender, and the rest. Classification of variables. Qualitative yields categorical responses, answers what kind, example, civil status, religious affiliations, citizenship, etc. Quantitative variables yields numerical responses, representing an amount or quantity, answers how much or how many, examples, number of children in the family, blood pressure, temperature, etc. If the variable is quantitative, you may classify them into discrete or continuous. Discrete pertains to the principle of counting. Example, number of students, number of patients, Continuous assumes values which are associated with points on an interval of the number line. Also pertains to the process of measurement with corresponding units. Example, height, weight, temperature. Discrete data contains finite values that have nothing in between. As against continuous data, contains data that can be measured, that includes fractions and decimals.
the four levels of measurement. Nominal is the crudest form of data. It uses numbers or symbols for categorizing subjects into groups or categories which are mutually exclusive. Ordinal possesses all the properties of the nominal data. It is just an improvement of the nominal data because in ordinal, the data are ranked or ordered in bottom to top or high to low. Basically, ordinal data is the ranking or order of the data. Interval possesses all the properties of the nominal and ordinal data. Here, the data are numeric in nature and the distances in any numbers are known. However, interval data, although numeric, does not have a stable starting point or absolute zero. Ratio possesses all the properties of nominal, ordinal, and interval data. It is also numeric in nature and has an absolute zero point. Thus, in a ratio data, we can classify order or rank them. And likewise, we can also compare their magnitudes. Hence, the values at this level, differences and ratios are meaningful. Here are some examples of the levels of measurement. Nominal type of cars, gender of respondents, ordinal, degree of effectiveness, satisfactory evaluation, interval, IQ score, temperature in terms of Fahrenheit and Celsius, ratio, age, income, examination scores. Let's do these. Classify the given as qualitative or quantitative, discrete or continuous only when the given is quantitative, nominal, ordinal, interval, or ratio. Number one, number of siblings in the family, qualitative or quantitative? Quantitative. Since it's quantitative, discrete or continuous? Discrete. Nominal, ordinal, interval, or ratio? Ratio. Number two, ID number. Qualitative or quantitative? Qualitative. Although ID number is a number, it is a replacement of the name. Therefore, it is categorical. Since it is qualitative, this is not applicable. Identify whether it's nominal, ordinal, interval, or ratio. It's nominal because it is categorical. Performance in statistics, below average, average, or above average, quantitative or qualitative? Qualitative. Since it's qualitative, this is not applicable. Is it nominal, ordinal, interval, or ratio? It is ordinal. How about you try? Number four, row score in statistics. You may post the video for you to answer. It is quantitative because it is numerical, discrete because 
there are no decimals for the row score and the ratio because it has an absolute zero point. The fifth one, combined monthly income of family. You may pause the video for you to answer. It is quantitative because it's numerical, continuous because it may have decimals, and it is ratio because it has an absolute zero point. The last one is body temperature. You may pause the video for you to answer. The answer is quantitative because it is numerical, continuous because it has decimals, and interval because it has no absolute zero point. Did you get everything right? There you have it. The lesson coverage one, basic statistical concepts. Hope to be with you again for the lesson coverage two. This is your instructor, Sir Arves. Bye.